What brought you to the field of play therapy and how did you begin your training? I was actually not planning on being a play therapist at all. I was a special ed teacher. So I was planning on saving all of the special ed kids in Dallas and Fort Worth, basically. And so I started shopping for a PhD program because the kids that I was working with weren't getting any psychological help because it was before the time they had elementary counselors in the state of Texas. And so I decided that I would start in a doctoral program. I already had two master's degrees. One was in special ed, one was in elementary teaching. And um, I wanted to like find a doctoral program that would give me tools to help this, these kids. Because all I really knew was behavior modification, and behavior modification wasn't really helping their psychological problems. It was keeping them in the room and keeping them doing their work, but it wasn't helping them in my mind. I tried seven different PhD programs, and I took classes in counseling psych, school psych, clinical psych, uh, special ed, social work, and then I stumbled onto counselor ed and fell in love with counselor ed and started going to the program at North Texas. The first year of the, pro the doctoral program, so I took all these beginning classes and um, kind of, well, I started being existential in the master's program. So in master's practicum, I was trying to be existential. And so I was having these authentic encounters with my clients. But I got really impatient because my first client was a woman who was um, in a domestic violence situation and I kept wanting to teach her skills and wanting to do other things and so I got a B in class which I'd hardly ever gotten a B before like in my life so I was pretty bummed out about the B and so um, I went to talk to the professor and the professor says you should not be existential because really existential doesn't work for you because you're a more of a doer than a beer and existentials should be beers, not doers particularly. So you need to look at a new theory. So I was doing that and, and in the first year doctoral program, I was taking simultaneously practicum, doctoral practicum and doctoral theories. And I was very, very into Adlerian by that time because I'd read all the stuff about Adlerian and kind of fell in love with Adlerian. And so um, I was doing Adlerian with my grown-up clients and we, had kind of a small crisis in my class because it was the first year they'd taught doctoral practicum. They'd had doctoral internship before that, but they hadn't had doctoral practicum. And, in, and because it was the first year they were teaching doctoral practicum, they did not have a, like a client stream. So we had no clients. And, um, and our teacher, he came in and he's like, I have, I have good news and bad news. And the good news is we have a new client and we all got really excited because we didn't have very many clients. And the bad news was you had to go get the client at the place where she lived because she didn't have any transportation. Bob, our teacher said, um, who's had play therapy? And out of the 10 people in my class, nobody had taken play therapy. Who's worked a lot with kids? And I'd been a regular ed teacher and then a special ed teacher. And by that time, I was actually a school counselor for a high school for learning disabled, emotionally disturbed kids. Um, and so I clearly had the most experience with kids. And so he said, OK, here's what we're going to do. So to make sure this is ethical, we're going to have somebody watch every session and give you feedback. And um, you need to go home over the weekend and read everything that's ever been written on play therapy. But not very much stuff had been written on play therapy. So I literally, because I'm obsessive, went home and read everything that had ever been written on play therapy and outlined it. And then I watched some of Dr. Landris' tapes. And I went in and um, basically tried to be my version of Gary Landreth in the playroom. How do you perceive the current state of play therapy? I think the current state of play therapy is lovely. Um, we're actually getting some research to back up that what we do like works and that's really cool. And there's lots of different approaches to play therapy now. Lots of different ways of doing play therapy. There's lots of choices of like training and um, lots of choices of different supervision. So I think it's pretty much flourishing. What suggestions do you have for the play therapist of 2020, 2025, or 2030? One of the things I've been thinking is that technology, whether we like it or not, is here to stay. And so one of the things that I believe is not necessarily that people should use technology in the playroom, 
like not necessarily have like um, you know like iPads or except, except sometimes I do bring my iPad in and um, play music for kids to dance with but um, I think people should be knowing about things like games that kids play and um, knowing what's important to kids because one of the things that that I have seen that I'm kind of sad about is that kids are less likely to play pretend than they used to be and um, what they play about is they play about the games that they play and I think it's important that people know what's going on in kids lives and what I used to advocate in the olden days was you know like people should watch cartoons and people should um, listen to music that is, is important to kids and I still think that's true but I also think like in the future that will become more and more and more important I am a little scared that what will happen though is that um, kids imagination and kids ability to pretend outside of those games and like what's happening in the technology world is going to like vanish and that's a little frightening to me so one of the things I would suggest is that people remember when they were little although more and more and more they're gonna be when they were little technology was in place um, but remember how to play like pretend games because in some ways I feel like with some of the kids that I work with I actually have to teach them how to pretend and I'm afraid that will be more and more and more true. What do you imagine will be a major focus for the field of play therapy in the next 15 years? Well, I'm hoping more people do research into play therapy, uh, like different approaches to play therapy. I think that should be a priority for us. Um, so that's one thing. I also have noticed that there's a pretty big trend toward um, like the mindfulness kinds of things and yoga and meditation. And so integrating the body and um, the brain and neuropsych things into play therapy, I believe that's going to continue. And so I think it behooves us to learn more about neuroscience and learn more about how to integrate the body. I am currently studying this thing called um, body-centered gestalt that's not play therapy, but I'm um, learning it so that I can work with kids um, physiologically and with their bodies as well as um, you know emotions and thinking and behavior because I think that's an important piece that we that we haven't necessarily explored but is starting to be explored more and more like I noticed at this conference even there are lots of presentations on that. How would you compare the first five years of your career as a play therapist to the last five years of your work? Well, for one thing, is kids don't play as much as they used to. So um, I, ha I ha do a lot more things. I do a lot more things with crafts, actually, than I used to. I do a lot more building kinds of things with kids because kids aren't particularly skilled at pretending. So I do a lot of, like, Lego building and... Um, like I make puppets with kids, so I do a lot more crafting kinds of things with kids. It's fascinating to me because I have some kindergartners now that I'm working with who don't know how to use a puppet. Um, and when I was first starting in the olden days, everybody knew how to do a puppet and everybody knew how to do voices. And um, so I, that's changed, I think, relatively significantly. It feels to me like kids are more stressed than they used to be. Um, it feels like as a society, we are more stressed than we used to be. And um, so kids are not as carefree as they used to be. And, um, and, and they're not as playful as they used to be. And I'm kind of sad about that. Just feels like there's lots more pressure. There's lots more things to learn. There's a lot higher kind of expectations from their family and from society. Um, when I first started doing play therapy, you know, kids needed to know their alphabet and their colors when they went to kindergarten. And now, pretty much so, kids who don't know how to read when they go to kindergarten, the school feels like it's, they're kind of behind. What led you to develop an Adlerian approach to play therapy? Remember that I was being observed every session um, so I would go, this little girl that I worked with lived in a children's home, and I would go to the children's home, 
and get her. After about eight weeks of doing that, this little girl said to me, now Terry, can I ask you a question? And I said, of course you can ask me a question, sweetie. And she said, well, how come you're fun and funny in the car and in the hallway, and you laugh and you tell me stories and I tell you stories. We just kind of play around. Then we get in that room with the toys and you just stay real still in the chair and you tell me what I'm doing and you tell me what I'm saying and you tell me how I'm feeling, which you know I don't like, but you're not very fun and you're not very funny and you aren't very lively. What's up with that? And I thought, okay, this eight-year-old kid is way smarter than I am. Because what I'm doing is I'm leaving my personality, who I am as a person, out in the hallway. And I'm going in the playroom and I'm trying to be somebody who I'm not. So I'm leaving what I believe about people, which in child-centered, what child-centered people believe is that the three core conditions of empathy, genuineness, and warmth are necessary and they are sufficient. And I, don't, I do believe that those three core conditions are necessary. For me, they are not sufficient. I want to do more with kids. And I was abandoning that, my beliefs about people and how they change, and I was abandoning myself and who I am and who I am with kids because I was trying to be somebody else. So I thought, OMG, what am I going to do? So I went back to the Adlerian literature and looked at what does the Adlerian literature say about working with kids? And truthfully, it wasn't very much. And nobody had ever done anything integrating play therapy with Adlerian ideas. And so uh, this is kind of weird to me now to imagine like the audacity, I guess, that I would think, well, I'll just invent a kind of play therapy. I'll just make up some stuff and integrate the ideas that Adler and Dreikers used and um, the play therapy basic skills and, and ideas and I'll just meld them together and I'll make a new kind of play therapy. And that seems really grandiose now, like that I would have thought that I could do that, but I did it. And, um, and so for my dissertation, I started teaching other people to do it. And then I started doing workshops and writing books and articles and stuff. And I went to the third play therapy conference in P at Penn State, and Louise Gurney and Charlie Schaefer were s and, and Gary were so nice to me and so helpful. Um, and I thought, oh, I could really do this. And so it's like uh, Jacob, my son, says that Adlerian play therapy is my birth child. He's adopted. Um, so he says, Adlerian play therapy is my birth child. And I sometimes feel like Geppetto, like with Pinocchio. And I wanted to make it a real boy. And so I wanted to make it a real approach to play therapy. And I guess it worked. How would you respond to the challenges about just playing with children from an Adlerian perspective? You know, I don't think it's any different from an Adlerian perspective than it would be from any play therapist thing, really. Um, because in Adlerian play therapy, a huge component of Adlerian play therapy is um, education of adults. So I actually don't get that very often because from the very beginning of working with a child, I tend to work with the kid's parents, um, with the kid's teachers. I do lots and lots of education of parents about what play therapy is and why I do what I do. I do lots and lots of in-services in the school where I volunteer, and I do Adlerian training. So I teach them about the crucial C's. I teach them about goals of misbehavior, et cetera. And, and um, I do lots and lots and lots of consultation with them. So I think they get from the very beginning that it's not just playing. Um, and, and I didn't start out having that be like, a, to do like a preemptive strike, but that what it, that's what it kind of works out to be. It's like I have a preemptive strike of, here's why I do what I do, I front load that. And so then I don't get those queries. 
What metaphor would you use to define the field of play therapy over the last 15, 20, or 30 years? Uh, what I think it is, what I think it is, is um, it's like a whole bunch of paths leading to the same place, which is helping children. And, and some of the paths are um, more complicated. Some of the paths are really straight and simple. But all of us want to help children. That's what all of us want to do. And um, for each of the approaches to play therapy and each of the styles of play therapy, there, there are different kinds of things. So some have lots of toys. Some don't have very many toys. Some um, are really complicated and have lots of steps to them. Others are like super simple. But all of those paths um, lead to the same def destination, which is making things better for children. What is your hope for play therapy? That people continue to want to use play to help kids. I think it could easy be easy for, uh, the, with the advent of technology, etc. I, I think it could be easy for people to stop playing. And that's kind of scary to me. And so my hope is that people don't stop playing. And that grown-ups play as well as kids do. And that, um, you know, I, I, my hope is that um, play therapy expands to working with all kinds of people, so elderly people who have dementia and um, grown-ups, and that, that people s don't, how do I say this in a positive way? I want people to stay connected. Because the scary thing to me about technology is that people are not connecting anymore. That people don't just talk and have conversations. And so my hope is that we don't lose that, that people keep on connecting person to person, keep on loving each other.